Hello everybody, today I'm going to explain what is sound using augmented reality. Alright, let's dive in. Sound is a form of energy just like heat and light. Sound waves are produced when air molecules vibrate and propagate through space. Let's consider a quiet room devoid of sound. In that room, these are the air molecules, static and spaced evenly apart. Now let's see what happens if we introduce a disturbance to them. So here's a tuning fork. Let's excite this tuning fork by striking it. Once excited, the tongs of the tuning fork start vibrating back and forth. And these vibrations cause the air molecules to move, you know, alternately squeezed together and pulled apart. And these molecules then subsequently push and pull against their neighboring molecules and this goes on and on. The vibrations on the tuning fork squeeze the air molecules and pull them apart. Now the regions where they're squeezed, they're the regions of high pressure and they're termed as compression. And the regions where they're pulled apart, they're the regions of lower pressure and they're termed as rarefaction. So this alternating pattern of compression and rarefaction is generated and it propagates through space away from the source. This sequential pattern of pressure fluctuations is what is heard as sound once it enters the human ears. Now for sound waves to propagate, there must be an intervening medium between the source and the receiver. In this case, there is air. But in case if there is no medium, sound waves cannot propagate. For example, sound waves cannot propagate through vacuum. And sound waves are longitudinal waves, meaning the propagation of uh, the medium is same as the propagation of wave. Now this demonstration was fairly simple because we only considered propagation of sound along one axis, sort of like a 1D propagation. But in reality, sound is far more complex. It travels along 3D space. So let's see how it appears in 3D space. Alright, so this is how sound propagates along 3D space. So it travels along all the three planes, X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z. A classic example is consider if you're walking on the street and if a dog is barking. You know, you still end up hearing the dog's bark, despite the fact that your ears and the dog's mouth, they're not in the same plane. That is possible because sound travels along 3D space. It's sort of like, you know, like if you have a point source, it sort of emanates like a spear. Here, I'm representing sound wave as a sinusoidal oscillation. Sound is a periodic repetition of compression and rarefaction, so it keeps repeating itself. A repetitive motion can be best represented by a sinusoidal oscillation. So here, the x-axis represents the time and the y-axis represents displacement. The region above the x-axis, they are called crests, and the region below the x-axis are called troughs. Now let's define the parameters. The first is the time period. So the time period is the time that it takes to complete one oscillation. So right from zero all the way to t. So the time that it takes to complete one oscillation is time period. It's measured in seconds. Now what is frequency? Frequency is the inverse of time period. Frequency is the number of oscillations completed in one second. It is measured in hertz. The next is the amplitude. Amplitude is, you know, closely related to the loudness of the sound. The last is the wavelength. The wavelength is a spatial distance beyond which the wave repeats itself. For example here, the wavelength is the distance between two crests. It can also be the distance between two troughs or one crest and one trough. Speed of sound is the distance traveled by sound per unit time. So the speed of sound at 20 degrees C is around 343 meter per second or like one kilometer in three seconds or one mile in five seconds. So the speed of sound depends on temperature, humidity, and the medium of propagation, but it is independent of frequency and wavelength. As you can see here, the speed of sound is related to the frequency and wavelength. It's a product of frequency and wavelength. And since speed of sound is constant in a given medium at a given temperature, we can derive an interesting relation here, which is the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. All right, so this is a comparison of high frequency and a low frequency wave. The main idea behind this is to show the fact that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to each other. Now let's consider this low frequency wave. Let's say this has a time period of one second, so it completes one oscillation in that particular time. And its frequency is also one hertz because, you know, one over one is one. 
In contrast, the high frequency wave, you know, completes four oscillations in one second, meaning it has a frequency of four hertz. And as you can observe, the wavelength has reduced. So this proves the fact that as the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases, and they're inversely proportional to each other. But no matter how fast is the frequency or how low frequency, they still end up traveling at the same speed, which is the speed of sound. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you have any suggestions, questions, hit the comments, and I'll be sure to respond. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.